hello hello crafty crandall here and today i am unboxing swatching palletizing and testing the shinhan watercolors this is their professional watercolor set however i am told that this is actually their student grade paint so um, despite the name professional in the line this is their student grade student grade range the set comes with 30 colors, although there is a white, so I only end up using 29 of them. The color range is very good. It's got a good variety of neutrals and brighter toned colors. Each tube is 7.5 milliliters and contains the color number, color name, and the light fastness rating in case you're curious. I'm very excited to have received this set and cannot wait to share more. So I am so excited to have received these paints and I bought a new 48 pan uh, Meaden palette. So this is a metal palette. It has um, the space for 48 pans, but then it also has this middle port uh, portion where previously I have been able to fit pans. So it might be even more depending on the configuration of these pans and I also have other uh, half pan wells as well. So this is an awesome palette as you can see the portion where the paint fits in comes out and then you also have uh, a good amount of mixing space on both sides. This is the larger version of the 24 and 12 uh, pan palettes that I already own. So I bought another one because I do really like these palettes and I am going to be filling up uh, all of the half pans with my brand new Shinhan Professional Water. In filling these pans, I did notice that a lot of the colors have different consistencies. So some of the colors were a lot more loose and watery and some of the colors were much more viscous and harder to really tap down and put into each of these wells. I'm not sure why this is, if the binder consistency is different or if the pigments make a difference with the consistency, but I did find that some of them were different than others. In the end, however, they did all dry down really well and they re-wet just about the same each of the colors. So I didn't find this to be a problem, uh, it was just something that I noted while filling the wells up. If you prefer to have like a lot flatter uh, consistency, you could probably use a tool to mix them up to get a much flatter uh, pour out of your paints. I would not recommend necessarily adding something to the paint, but perhaps mixing them would help with this if it bothers you. Overall though, I didn't have a problem with this and I thought that all of the colors poured out very well and were pretty consistent with how they were labeled. Uh, the colors on the tubes did match pretty well with the colors that came out of the tube. Uh, I do swatch these colors later on so you can see how they look on paper. Like I said, I am only going to be filling 29 of the wells because I prefer to leave the white out of my palette. I have not yet found a use for white watercolor. Uh, if you prefer to leave a comment down below and indicate to me what the use might be, I would love to hear it. Uh, I've heard that it can be used to mix pastel watercolors. However, if I'm going for a pastel finish, I would tend to use gouache instead. So. I'm not sure when or if I would use this white, but I do have it should I need it. Here are all of the colors in close-up after I had poured them into each of the wells. You can see here the consistency that I was speaking of, particularly in that lemon yellow. It was rather chunky compared to the rest, um, whereas like the green, the pink, the blues, those were all far less chunky. Now I split them up by color to try to arrange in my head how I wanted my palette to look. 
Uh, I tend to do this whenever I'm setting up a new palette and I find that it works pretty well just to organize everything in advance. I then put everything side by side so that I had it readily available for when I wanted to put the colors into the palette, but retain their order so that I knew how to mark up my swatch sheet. As far as the swatching goes, I first set up my watercolor paper. Uh, for the swatch sheet, I use my B watercolor paper. Uh, this is just some cheap watercolor paper that you can typically find on Amazon and I prefer to use it because it is already in sheets and I didn't need to take a sheet out of my arches block for this. Now, I personally hate watching swatching. It is not my favorite thing to do. I don't mind like performing the action myself, but I hate watching other people swatch colors. So I did try to speed this up for you in case you're like me. But I also wanted to include it because I know that some people find the swatching process very relaxing and they like to see how the colors look as they come out of the tubes. So there you have it. <laughs> Hopefully you will not be annoyed, um, but if you are, you can feel free to skip ahead. I would like to note that these colors were very opaque. With the exception of a couple of them, I found them to be rather opaque, much more so than my Sennelier watercolors. And the colors were very vibrant, uh, much more so than I'm used to in my watercolors. Now, you can see with the brown, um, the burnt umber color, and also the top red color that Sure, some of them are not as vibrant as others, but for the most part, this range was rather unexpectedly vibrant. I can't wait to paint more with these watercolors to really understand how that will affect me stylistically. Because I am so used to my Sennelier watercolors, I am not sure how I will end up using these on finished pieces to my advantage. Typically, if I'm looking for very vibrant colors, I will use my Kuretake Ganzai Tambi paints. However, I find that the consistency of those paints are different from these, so I now have three really distinct different watercolors to use on different pieces. Overall, the colors were easy to re-wet, and I found that I was able to get a pretty well-loaded brush right off the bat. It was not hard to build up a really solid color, and overall, I like the mix of color I, I was given. However, you can see that really redundant green. I dislike how redundant the, um, the sap green and the yellow green are. I prefer to use my sap green from Mgram anyway, so I probably won't end up using that particular color too terribly much in the future. The blues also had a bit of redundancy to them, as you can see. Um, but I have less of a problem with this because I do tend to use a lot of blue in my illustrations and will probably find a use for all of them. The brown range as well was pretty good. Uh, we had some very opaque browns and then some less opaque browns and one of them was even a nice granulating color so I did appreciate that. Here you can see a close-up of all of my swatches and as you can see, some of the colors are, like I said, much more transparent than others. That bright pink color is an enigma to me. I'll have to see how I use that. But overall, I do like the colors that they provided. Here I am painting my first piece with the Shin Han Professional Watercolors. I decided to paint a piece that I've actually digitally produced previously, but decided to recreate in watercolor as I felt that the color range really worked well with the colors that I had in this set. Uh, I will try to post the finished illustration up to my Instagram, and you can compare there my finished digital piece and this watercolor illustration. Now, I will say, this paint was a little bit more difficult to use than I was anticipating. It did do very well with the wet-on-wet -wet technique. It spreads very nicely. There is a lot of motion to this paint, and I did appreciate that. 
However, because of the opacity of this paint, I found it a little bit difficult to blend colors into one another. And I definitely have to do more work on this in the future because, like I said, it was somewhat frustrating to find uh, as, as I continued to paint this piece. Uh, you can see that I'm here overworking the water and upon applying the extra bit of water to the sides of these more dark areas of the water, um, the colors just spread a lot. And again, I do, I do really appreciate that aspect of this paint. I think that that will be a very good feature to note and to use in future illustrations. Because this is my first time using them, I didn't know what features would be the best with them. So I was kind of just trying a bit of everything. <laughs> I tried some wet on wet, wet on dry, and tried to make a couple of rather large flat washes, but then later decided that they needed some texture. So uh, all in all, I was very pleased with how these paints performed, and I, again, am very excited to use them on a piece for which they might be better suited. I will say that this subject matter and this piece might not be the best for these paints. Conversely, I might just not be the most experienced painter on the planet and didn't really know how to execute the vision that I had. So take that with a grain of salt. I am by no means a professional painter. I just am an enthusiast. I like watercolors and I like reviewing art supplies. <laughs> a little bit more about the actual piece that you're seeing me paint. This is a scene from my dad's backyard. We have a pond and we have three small fish in this pond. They are goldfish, and one of them is mine. <laughs> the turtle that you see there is a statue, and then we have some rocks and just some like filler rocks as well. The pink splotch that you see there is a pond lily. We were fortunate enough to get one full pond lily out of our pond this year, and it was an absolute joy to see. So that is the scene that I am painting. This pond brings me so much joy, and I absolutely love it. So that is why I am painting it and recreating it visually now for a second time. I tried to do a lot of different flat washes. I tried lifting these paints and I tried to add as much texture to this piece as I could. Now, I will say that some of the texture ends up looking a little bit wonky, but overall, I am somewhat pleased with how this painting turned out. I do question whether it would have turned out better if I were using watercolor that I was familiar with, but that wasn't the point of this piece. This piece was to test new things, and I definitely think that the complexity of this piece lended itself very well to testing these paints. I feel like I have got a better handle on how they work, and I can't wait to use them again in the future. You see there how readily this paint spreads. That is a feature that I do not have with my Sennelier watercolors, and will definitely take some getting used to. If you like paint that is very good at moving, um, then this might be a good paint for you. If you prefer paint that will stay exactly where you put it, uh, the Sennelier paints are actually fairly good at that, I would say. They, you know, can perform wet on wet technique textures and, you know, you can achieve some mobility with them if you are good with your water. However, they don't move as much as these paints and they definitely don't get that much uh, water staining when you add clear water to them. These paints did that a lot, and, you know, I'm not mad about it. I think that that'll be a useful feature in the future. As far as the vibrancy of these paints go, I do find that these are very vibrant paints, even in use. So, on their swatches, they looked extremely vibrant, um, mostly because, you know, you're using the paint in its, like, least watered down form, but even when watering it down, it still had so much of that opacity 
and just so much of the vibrancy. So I really appreciated that. These would be a great um, stepping stone into tube watercolors if you have used the Kuretake Genzai Tambi paints. I think that these would be an excellent like venture into using tube paints if you're used to using the Kuretake Genzai Tambi paints from their palette. Now, do I think that's absolutely necessary? No, not necessarily. Uh, you can get similar function from the Ganzai Tambi paints. So, you know, if you don't need another set of very uh, opaque and very vibrant watercolors, then you might want to pass on these and invest in a less vibrant set of watercolors. I think... Although I received these as a gift, so I don't know for sure on the price point, I think that these are a relatively affordable set of student grade watercolors and might be an excellent introductory set if you're looking for a beginner watercolor set. Like I said, this set comes with a lot of really great colors. It has a lot of convenience colors that would be very difficult to mix, so it's nice that they include them. They also have a good range of neutral colors that you can use to work on mixing new colors yourself. The colors mixed very well on my palette. I did appreciate how well they mixed together. And I was able to create, you know, basically every color that I needed for this piece. I don't know that I would recommend these paints for someone who is a more professional watercolorist or for someone who needs an artist grade paint because you are painting things for other people. Um, I don't personally sell much, if any, of my work, so this is less of a concern to me. But if you do, I don't know that I would recommend these for that purpose, although they do include a light fastness rating. I'm not sure that these are the most light fast paints on the planet. So if that's your primary objective, I think I would pass on these and buy a more expensive, more professional watercolor uh, palette or range. Now, that said, this brand, Shinhan, does have a professional set of watercolors, so if you found that you liked these or if you are interested in them from my video here uh, or for any other reason and you do require very light fast pigments because you are producing work that you are selling to other people, you might want to check out their professional range. Uh, I believe it is called the PWC. Uh, I am not positive about that. I will try to leave a link down below in the description about those uh, and also a link in the description for these paints if I can find it. Like I said, I didn't buy these so I'm not honestly too sure how expensive they were. Um, or anything of the sort. These were a gift from my aunt and uncle for my birthday, so um, I am not familiar with the purchasing process for these, whether they are readily available at stores, etc. I will see what I can dig up, and I will let you know in the description down below. Please let me know in the comments below whether you prefer this style of review wherein I do all of the unboxing, swatching, etc. along with a full-size painting, or would you prefer in the future for them to be broken up into separate videos? I am curious as I personally find that I prefer separate videos, but I know that a lot of watercolorists and paint reviewing YouTubers do tend to put them all in the same video, so if you could let me know that in the comments below, I would be curious to know your thoughts so that I can improve for the future. Additionally, if there's specific information that I didn't include in this review and you are curious about, please let me know in the comments and I will absolutely answer every comment that I can. One thing that I failed to mention earlier is that the pigments are actually also listed on the backs of the tubes if you care to know that information. Uh, I personally don't know enough about watercolor pigments to really speak to them. If you are looking for a reference for that though, uh, In Liquid Color uh, by Denise Soden, her YouTube channel, is an absolutely phenomenal resource for any and all watercolor pigment information. 
She is extremely knowledgeable on the subject and has so many helpful videos for that sort of thing. She also does a color spotlight series on her channel, so I would recommend that you check her out if you care to know more about the pigmentation uh, or any of that sort of thing. For these particular watercolors, like I said, they do have their pigment information on the tube, and I'm sure that you can also find that on the website if you need to know that information before purchasing these watercolors. Uh, it's not personally something that I look for, so I forgot to mention it, <laughs> and I don't honestly know, you know, whether that would affect your, your buying or not. That said, I think that it is handy that they put it on the tubes for you, even though this is student grade watercolor. Uh, it is very handy that they put all of the, you know, more professional facts on their tubes. Uh, some of the watercolors that I've run across don't have this information readily available, so I do think that this is helpful. I also failed to mention earlier that Shinhan is a South Korean brand, so similar to the Magello brand that I would like as my next professional brand watercolor, uh, Shinhan is produced in South Korea. Other than the two pans of the Magello Mission Gold colors that I have, I don't think that I've used any other watercolor from South Korea, and I am very pleased with how these performed, so I might prefer to, you know, have some of them in the future, more particularly the Magello Mission Gold colors. I overall really enjoyed the performance of these watercolors, and I think that I can find some pieces to use them on in the future, and really kind of want to actually start tailoring the pieces that I'm doing to specific watercolors that I have. So right now I tend to default to my Sennelier colors just because they are the only artist quality professional watercolors that I own. However, I think that some of the pieces that I do would look better if I use the watercolor most readily suited for the type of watercolor that I'm performing. So in this case, I think I would use these colors for a very vibrant aesthetic and anything where I need, you know, a lot of color and I would also like a lot of texture. I think that these watercolors did very well at applying a textured aspect to the, the page and although I don't really achieve the amount of texture in the rocks that I wanted, I think that the texture in the water area was very well done. Um, Maybe not, you know, aesthetically, but I think that it achieved a good amount of texture um, performance-wise, like whilst I was putting the color down on the paper. So these are effects that I would like to play with, you know, in the future and really try to perfect as part of my practice with watercolors for the future. Uh, I'm excited to have a paint that performs the way these do and I'm excited to kind of push them a little bit further. Uh, if there's anything that you would like to see me paint with these colors, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I am trying to come up with some great ideas for really more textured pieces, perhaps more abstract than what I currently paint. Uh, I tend to do a lot of realism and, you know, painting of still lifes and landscapes, and I'd kind of like to push myself to not only get better at portraits, but also start to come up with more abstract concepts for my pieces and, you know, utilize a little bit more texture and fun in my watercoloring. Uh, I do tend to have, again, very realistic pieces, so I think that a lot of that fun element is, is lost when I do my paintings, and I'd really like to get back to that. One way that I plan on doing this is by completing some more art challenges. I have a lot of really fun videos coming up and I am very excited to explore a new series of art videos on my channel wherein I am going to try the styles of various YouTube artists. I am excited to see if I can recreate some of their illustrations, most particularly in this case with the watercoloring YouTube YouTubers that I follow, as I think that I can really push myself to learn by studying their styles and kind of trying to apply some of their techniques within my own pieces. 
At this point, I have managed to finish this particular piece. And while I don't love the outcome of the painting itself, I can say that these paints were an absolute joy to work with. I am so excited for the future of using them and trying out new things because of them. That is definitely one thing that new supplies gives you is a new perspective as to the capability of said supplies so that you can push your creativity further. These have definitely done that for me and I'm excited to share my progress along the way with all of you. Please let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this video. Please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel if you're interested in further watercolor or generalized art videos. I also post booktube videos on my channel, so if you are interested in both, please stick around and subscribe. Let me know what you think about the piece down below, and I hope that you all have a great day wherever you are in the world, and that you are doing well. Thank you. Bye.